Mother Man. Yo, Chris here of Skeletor Remains, and you're listening to Murder Metal Mayhem. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal This is Pete Altieri with the Murder Metal Mayhem podcast, and I've got the privilege of doing this interview with Chris Munroy and Mike De La O, founding members of the old school death metal band Skeletal Remains. You guys are from sunny Los Angeles, so how's the weather been, uh, been like out there today? Pretty much the opposite. Not sunny. <laughs> yeah, not sunny at all. Wow, I actually checked my my weather app to see cuz I'm in central Illinois and uh, I was like, "Damn, we're about the same temperature." So yeah, not uh, not so sunny. It's not terrible here, but I'm sure no, for you good. guys it it sucks being colder, so. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's not it's not that bad. Um there was a little bit of sun today, but like yesterday and the day before that it was just like a bunch of rain. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's not it's not bad. It's not like it's freezing or anything. I mean, it gets super cold at night, but during the day, it's it's, it's pretty. You know, it's, it's not that bad. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I have to share a quick story with you guys of how this interview came to be. I was watching a true crime doc. I watch a lot of them on YouTube for you know for doing murder metal mayhem, and just because I like that kind of stuff. And they mentioned in the uh, episode I was watching that they had found some skeletal remains. So I was like, wow, it's been a while since I've listened to skeletal remains. So I, the next day I'm downloading Devouring Mortality and I've been jamming the shit out of it and all the rest of your stuff. And I actually told the guys that would be like a funny drinking game would be to watch a true crime doc. And every time they mention a metal band name or a song title <laughs> or something like that, you have to drink. So skeletal remains is very common on those true crime docs. Lividity is another good one. You know, there, there's so many of them. And I figured you could use Encyclopedia Metallum to like verify it's legit. And then if it is, then everybody's got to drink. So that's yeah, just, be a good I thought that would be cool. But that's the, and then I get a hold of you, Chris. Because I'm like, man, let's do an interview. So, uh, so yeah, so that's how this whole happened. I just thought you guys would get a kick out of that. So you're getting some plugs yeah. in the true crime documentaries, reminding people they need to go listen to some skeletal remains. All right, Chris, you're the vocalist and one of the guitar players in the band. How has the band's influences changed from the first album uh, in 2012 to the last one, Entombment of Chaos, in 2020 or are they kind of the same um i mean for the most part i think the influences have stayed the same uh obviously there's been you know influ like different bands introduced like like i don't know like um we've i, I feel like we've taken um i guess some, we've we've taken some from like newer bands as well that we feel like or like for the first, I don't know, two two records, we were very just like focused on trying to sound like um, you know all the stuff that was done in the late '80s, early '90s. Right. Not that we don't do that anymore, but there is a lot more influence as well with like newer stuff, um, newer death metal bands because there's a bunch of sick death metal bands out oh, there at the man. moment that that have also influenced us. But I mean, I think for the most part, I mean, the influences have all stayed the same. It's just. Uh, we just we just mostly just try to like change things up a little bit and just um you know just kind of try to not try to not i guess see how can i explain it not tr try to not just be like um try to focus on one thing i guess if that makes sense i'm not really sure if i'm explaining no it right, but, i i but, think you know, your early stuff compared to the new stuff you could see a natural like maturity of the sound and it keeps getting more intricate um and it's but it hasn't lost its roots i really dig it um i think that every album is better than the one before it they're just fantastic you guys are really great um 
Thank you. Thank you. And I think it, you know, as a musician too, listening to it from that side of it, it just, you could tell you guys are just really coming into your own. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Thank and that, that's, yeah, that's what, that's kind of what we've been trying to do. I mean, obviously like, like I said, we haven't like, well, those influences will always wear our influences on our sleeves, you know? So um, it's not like we'll try to change the, the way the band sounds. It's just, we, we want it to be a little bit more, Skeletal remains of it than being like compared. I mean, it's always going to be compared because you know people just like to compare it no matter what. But uh, we just want it to be a little bit more of us, I guess. So we just kind of try to change things up a bit to make it sound more like skeletal remains, if that makes sense. No, it does, man. That's very cool. Now, Mike, you're the other guitarist in the band, and do you have any influences that might surprise our listeners now? I was going through some old pictures of you guys, and I thought I saw a picture of you or at least one of you guys with a King Diamond shirt on, and I thought that was cool. I'm a big King Diamond fan, so do you listen to, I mean, are you just a death metal listener, or do you no, listen I mean, to lots of stuff? I mean, yeah, we're, we're all over the place when it comes to all the music we listen to, but yeah, definitely the, the, the 80s heavy metal style was... Uh, pretty much our, our one of our earliest influences like going back to high school day you know just partying listening to those bands i mean we're underage but we you know hanging around <laughs> drinking just and that stuff and um right yeah they've, they've always been in our blood so it'll always be there you know obviously i think especially when it comes to our when our, like our solo work we do a little more like melodic kind of shreddy 80s stuff yeah combined with modern modern uh modern musicians but um yeah, you know, you you can, you'll definitely hear it in a lot of our, our styles, like a lot of our harmonies and stuff like that. Um, definitely influenced from from the '80s stuff. So that's Still cool. There. Yeah, I uh, I couldn't help but love the post you had, Chris, of that uh, uh, Wasp Metallica Armored Saint tour. Uh, you had posted yeah. something on Facebook, and I'm like, damn, I was there uh, at the Hartford, Connecticut show. Um, saw yeah, that yeah, there was like 200 people there, dude, because it was a blizzard, and there was like yeah, 200 I I people. I think I remember you commenting something about that. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 It was a yeah, trip. Was awesome. I was like an arm's length from Cliff Burton. It was just the most intense thing yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and he did anesthesia, awesome. and I thought I was gonna shit. I had just started playing bass, so I was like, damn, that was pretty impressive so that was super cool to see but when i saw you do that and like i said when i saw the picture of mike with the king diamond shirt it's just cool to see you know some other types of metal influencing you know bands and i just think that's awesome so no yeah we started with like yeah we started with like all i guess the same way that i think most people like we started with like you know all the fucking classic rock all the classic stuff and then you know slowly made our way to like more heavy metal and then right then we found out found out who cannibal corpse was morbid angel <laughs> and that's when we started to go a little bit more extreme but you know we, we're fans and not just not just metal like i mean we're, we're all fan, like mike said we're all over the place when it comes to music um i think it just has to do with being a musician we just kind of you know we appreciate it, like every you know everything that sounds good to us i guess but but yeah right. now we're we're not just like uh, we don't just try to focus on on death metal. We we I mean we we have influences all over the place, and even if it like some people might not be able to pick that up, but there is uh, there is stuff that influences our music, and it's not death metal, you know. No, that's awesome. I'm sure now now hearing I'll be listening for that more and probably pick out more. Mm -hmm. But I know what Mike was talking about with some of the cool melodic guitar parts. I mean, yeah, you could totally hear that. That's for sure. Now, yeah, man, I like. Andy LaRocque is like one of my favorite guitar players. Oh, dude, like, he's ridiculous, you know, that's, man. Yeah, that's like, yeah, I, I tend to try to use it, like, mimic a lot of the stuff he does. I'm obviously not as good as him, but like, <laughs> I, I, just, I just love the shit that he did. And, is it individual uh, thought patterns or? He did, yeah, he, he did that with Death. Yeah, yeah. that but, was, that was just phenomenal. You could totally hear him. You know, he's very distinct. Yeah, but, so when you hear those leads, you're like, fuck yeah, that's Andy LaRocque, man. That's freaking cool yeah, as shit. Yeah. All right, um, Chris, I saw a Facebook post that you guys are in pre-production for a new album, and I was just wondering if you could 
let us in on what's going on, you know, any kind of predictions of when we might see something or what's the plan? Yeah, so we've been pretty much, I mean, last year was super crazy as far as touring, so we didn't really have much time to, like, work on stuff. So as soon as we did, like, what was it? I think our last tour was Australia at the end of last year. Uh, we started getting, because we had already, I think, like, maybe two songs written that we started writing right after we released um, Entombment. Because uh, right after we released it, COVID happened, and we're like, shit, what are we going to do? You know, we can't tour. So we tried writing some stuff, but we felt like, you know, it just didn't feel right just because we were so used to, you know, releasing a record and going straight on tour and, you know, focusing on that. And then after, you know, after a year of touring or whatever, we'll start writing again. So going from just releasing a record to writing again, just, I don't know, it just felt kind of weird to us. So we kind of just like, we wrote, I think, like one and a half songs and we just kind of took a break. And then... um we we got back to it after um after the Australian tour and we kind of just been working hard so right now we're about six songs into the new record awesome. we're doing pre-production for those six songs to uh to have something to listen to while we're on the Morbid Angel tour that starts next uh next month um and then once we get back we're we're going to finish the rest of the the record and then get into to, to record it um but yeah, we, we, we've kind of just been focusing on that. Um, our plan this year was kind of just like to focus on the new record, not really tour or anything, but we got this Morbid Angel offer and that's not really something we can say yeah, no to. Yeah, right, you know, right. Me. That's like you perfect. Know, we, it's like, it's like a, yeah, it's a dream come true for us. You know, that's one of our biggest influences. So um, so anyway, so after, after we're done with that tour, um, we're just going to be focusing on the new record and our plan is to hopefully be in the studio to track it maybe like june so oh wow i'm, I'm not sure if uh if it will be, re be released at the end of this year if not maybe early next year we're not it just depends on how fast we get it done the right. artwork is already um, in the works so we're trying to like uh you know trying to do everything kind of like not quickly but you know kind of just be prepared so once the actual album is done we can turn everything in and that's the awesome. record can just can they, the record label can just focus on getting it out so so yeah we've just kind of been uh focusing on that man we've been hitting it pretty hard uh pierce and brian were down here uh, a few weeks ago we had a um a show secret show i guess or whatever um while they were down here and they were down here just for like a week riding with us and yeah we did it we it went really well we progressed a lot so awesome man. yeah we'll be we'll, we'll be getting back to that once we get back from the morbid angel tour and um, coming to them and finishing the record, and so Very yeah, we're cool. pretty stoked, man. The songs are sounding fucking really sick, so we can't uh, wait for everybody to hear them. Excellent. And speaking of that, Mike, what's the songwriting process for you guys like? I mean, are you and Chris like teaming up and working on stuff together? Do you work on stuff on your own? I mean, how does it how does it all come together? Uh, for the most part, it's Chris and I teaming up. Um, I mean, everyone, I'm, it's kind of hard here at home because we've got a full house, so it's hard for me to focus, slurp, sit down. <laughs> and So every once in a while, I'll come up with a riff idea here or there, but for the most part, yeah, Chris and I will get together at the studio and just kind of like riff after riff, just kind of bounce off each other. And um, we usually kind of do it to like a drum, uh, drum machine to begin with. So like we start getting the structure going pretty well. But um, yeah, like, like Chris had said, when uh, Pierce and Brian were here, it was, it was our first time having them uh, help out with a couple songs. So that was, that was pretty cool because uh, for a while, Chris and I were kind of like, uh, we're stuck for a bit. You know, we're felt felt a little dry. You know, um, we just couldn't really get it. We, I mean, we're pumping out ideas, which is nothing was really connecting. Right. And having some fresh brains come in and, you know, we always joke about Brian cause he's like this fucking music nerd and this music whiz. So having him come in and kind of give us like different looks of, of uh, riffs we're writing in different feels, everything started flowing naturally again. So awesome. It, it's been really cool, you know, but yeah, you know, for the most part, it is Chris and I. Very cool. That's cool. Yeah. Just curious how it is. Every band does it a little bit different. Now, Chris, what was your first metal concert, and did that influence you playing guitar? Or yeah, um, well, the reason, yeah. So my first con, my first metal concert, because I, I had 
did a different con like my actual first show was not metal but my first metal concert was metallica um in 2003 i think it was 2000 yeah i think it was 2003 it was for the saint anger tour um and that was the reason i i played guitar because you know kirk hammett it's one of my biggest influences um so back then seeing them was like a fucking dream come true you know and um Nobody, nobody from my family wanted to come with me. And one of my friends from school went. He went with his dad, but like, I don't remember what happened because I think I was supposed to go with them, but I'm not sure what happened. So I can't remember. It was so long ago, but something happened last minute, and nobody from my family wanted to go. So I went to the show alone, um, <laughs> and we weren't sitting together. So I, I kind of was just, yeah, it was kind of, it was, it was a cool experience, but it was kind of weird, you know, because I'm like this yeah. you know, 13 year old kid, kind of like just <laughs> at this huge show. Um, fortunately my, my dad was cool enough to fucking take me and just wait for me outside. Um, so he kind of just took a nap while I was in there watching, watching the show or whatever. And then, um, yeah, it was fucking sick, man. That was, that was my first metal show. And, um, That's cool. yeah, I'll, I'll never forget that. Um, but yeah, like I think for both me and Mike, like Metallica is one of our hugest influences, you know? So, oh, yeah. um, early that's stuff the for reason, me. yeah, that's part of the reason why I think we make music and we play instruments you know because of, i mean there's other bands too but metallica i think is like the one that like you know yeah we're like fuck we got it we got we got to do we got to write music and shit but right but yeah that was my first concert uh 2003 and it was in long beach cool what about shit. you mike what was your first uh, what about you my same thing my first concert was in metal but my first uh metal concert was actually metallica as well interesting um, but it, it wasn't up until like my 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 later teens actually i think it was 2006 or 7 bro it was like a year or two before they dropped uh death magnetic so they started coming around and and pumping some new shit out but um yeah i i seen them at i think it was the Verizon amphitheater in uh Irv, Irvine i believe it is and uh it was it was fucking awesome you know like i mean yeah like chris said you know fucking metallica's our thing and it's funny cuz uh james was actually my fucking guitar god oh, the longest nice. And nice. just that rhythm is, wicked, is what got wicked got rhythm player that's for sure yeah i'm gonna make you guys sick when i tell you about mine now i'm obviously older than you both okay so i know that you have no control over when you were born but i, yeah. I my first metal show 1983 iron maiden the peace of mind tour was just like holy shit i mean blown the fuck away i just been playing bass you know not that long ago and then it was right after that it was that metallica show i think was 84 85 so i mean it was preceding that so i was new to playing bass and watching steve harris i mean putting on a clinic you know on stage and of course they had the great big you know pyro and it was just you know this massive stage show, so it was it was pretty awesome, and I was hooked uh, for sure. Yeah, so, that's fun. yeah. so I like yeah, to yeah, tell man. the I like to tell the young guys those stories because they're like, holy shit, man, that's that's back in the day. So definitely, I was yeah. I was there back in the day. So, but uh, so, yeah, you guys definitely uh, a little bit younger. So, all right. <laughs> um, Chris, I know you guys are getting ready for that Morbid Angel tour, which when I saw that, I was like, that's like the perfect band to play with Morbid Angel. Uh, what can you tell us about how that all came about? Um, it, I mean, we've kind of been, we, we, that's like, like, a, that's like one of our dream tours, you know, uh, like I said, that's one of our biggest influences. So we've always just want like, been wanting a tour with Morbid Angel, um, but it kind of just, we were just hit up about it um, from our agent. Our agent was like, hey, there's this Morbid Angel tour. Are you guys interested? And I, we were like, of course we are. You know, we've been fucking asking for, <laughs> we've been asking for this for a long time, you know? Um, so, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't really anything like um, anything more than that. It was just like our agent just up like, hey, do you guys want to uh, do this tour? Second on the bills, uh, you know, and pretty much that's it and all the details or whatever and we're like yeah fuck yeah we'll do it so yeah it was it was it wasn't like yeah it wasn't more than that it was we just got asked about to awesome but if we wanted to be on it and like i like i said mentioned earlier like yeah our plan was not to 
to not kind of just take a break this year and like focus on on the record but we got hit up with this tour off and we're like yeah we can't we can't say no to that no not at all when does that start you said it's next month yeah so we start a little bit earlier because we we got to make our way up to florida where the, the actual tour starts so we start on the 10th but i think the actual the first show of the morbid angel tour tour i think is the 14th or the 15th something like that all right very cool well i'm going to link to you guys in the episode description so if you're listening or watching and you want to get a hold of these guys and find out about their uh their tour dates and then also i don't know of a band on the planet that has more merch than you guys I, I was looking at your merch page. I'm like, for fuck's sake, I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling. I'm like, holy shit. Like, do you guys have like a warehouse somewhere where all this stuff is, is kept? I just, I couldn't believe it. It was just, uh, it was just blew me away. That's impressive. So. Yeah. I wish we did, man. <laughs> we, keep, we, keep, we keep all that shit. We keep all that shit out of my house. So it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of sucks. It takes a lot of room, but um, I'm but sure. No, it's cool. I mean, yeah, yeah, we try, we just try to offer as much, like you know, we we try to make it so there's something for everyone, you know. So, um, obviously, when we go on the road, we can't take everything, so we just try we the same thing. We try to take as much as we can, but um, but yeah, we get we get told that a lot that we, we have a shitload of merch. But hey, man, I, I mean, this no, is, it's smart, that, man. That, the, that's what, yeah. quality is fantastic i gotta say this is i get i buy shirts all the time and this is one of the better quality shirts i've had i mean it fits really well it's just it's nice so um, yeah we try yeah. With, that, that's yeah, thing with us we try to like uh give our fans really qual good quality stuff you know we don't try to like make cheap shit because we've, we've worked with some like printers where it's like the quality is really bad and we're like dude we can't sell this like it's like yeah it's not right. gonna work so we try we try to just like you know give everybody all, all our fans some quality stuff and um yeah i mean this is the way we make money you know i mean it's kind of we, like going on tour and selling merch like that's kind of the, the, the name of the game you know yeah. so it's like we just we just try we just try to like um you know like i said offer a little bit to to everybody and you know to help us out with you know because I mean, we're not fucking, you know, this huge band. We don't make all this money, you know. So, right. we, like, when we go on tour, you know, we just try to it be helps. smart about it. Yeah, it helps to, to um, you know. Puts gas you know, so in the tank, them. puts food on the yeah, table. Exactly. So, yeah, for sure. Gets to, the, to the next city or whatever. And luckily, we have some fucking awesome loyal fans that no matter what, you know, there's, like, we've had fans that come and spent, like, one grand just one person on our merch wow so it's like yeah so it's a, we have some really fucking sick fans so we it's that's we can't awesome. thank them enough, you know yeah no that's fucking yeah. cool man now uh mike i like asking bands this question are what are some bands you're listening to that maybe our listeners might not know about you know some of the unknown maybe it's a local band or a band you guys found on tour that you just loved any that you want to mention? Because I I've gotten so many good tips from from this, and then I've got one for you guys. If you guys want to hear one of mine, I'll share with you. But uh, what do you what do you think? Anything? Oh man, that's kind of tough because uh, I don't know, I haven't really had my feelers out there for for much of anything. Just kind of like listening to a lot of the same stuff lately, trying to get my influence back. But um, yeah, I mean, there's what a I was there is an older band that like I, I do love like crazy and they're called uh, Oblivion. Um, my favorite record from them is, is uh, called Nemesis, I believe. Okay. And they're like a death threat band from uh, based out of Canada. I think the record came out in 93, but um, that's like a, an underground band that like people are kind of picking up on now, but I still feel, you know, not, not very known. And yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, I love the death thrash stuff myself. It's like, but my two favorite genres. So you, I can't go wrong with the combo there, you know. Yeah. What about you, Chris? You know, you said you were kind of thinking the same thing Mike was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I was going to say the same thing, just because, like, right now that we're like in writing mode, I kind of just like don't want to listen to other yeah, stuff. Like, yeah. I, I kind of just yeah. I kind of don't really like. I haven't really listened to anything like. Um, I guess new. I'm kind of just like going back to like you know our roots and stuff to try to kind of you know get some influence and like kind of 
you know, get shit going when we're trying to write music. But, um, yeah, there's not really, I mean, um, yeah, I can't really think think of anything at the moment. I'm sure there is, but I just can't think of And this always happens when someone asks me something. Like, Fuck, I should have mentioned that. But, <laughs> well, you, you uh, mentioned yeah. Australia, and one of my favorite yeah. bands that I've just been listening to a lot the last couple of years is in malice's wake they're from melbourne but they're death okay, thrash so. and they're fucking ridiculous i mean really good uh, i think you would definitely cool. dig it um in malice's wake yeah they're really great and then another band a young band i just stumbled on a three-piece out of japan called parasitario and they sound oh, yeah, like you guys. Yeah. Like when oh, I yeah, was yeah. listening to them, I'm like, well, this is kind of, uh, and it wasn't like a diss on, you know, I'm not trying to like say anything negative. It was just so obvious that the, the band is really into <laughs> skeletal remains. Cause it sounds a lot like your style, but they're fucking killing it, man. A three piece. Um, yeah. Yeah, good stuff, but uh, they yeah, just got the one great, album. Uh, yeah, I think they're just, yeah, they're about to release a new record. Or It just uh, came out. It, it just came out because yeah, okay. I got it on Bandcamp. But, yeah, I yeah, heard it, yeah. and I'm like, wow, these guys sound an awful lot like Skeletal Remains, which, again, is cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. those dudes, uh, the guitar player, I believe, like, he, yeah, I've been in touch with him for a while. He would hit me up and stuff, and, yeah, cool. they're just really big fans. And yeah. it's super cool to see stuff like that, you know? Yeah, like, it's awesome. You know, being able to being able to influence other bands it's fucking awesome um, exactly but yeah those guys, those guys are great um I'm try, yeah right now that you mentioned something else and i was in a i did an interview with I, laceration I, which is a california northern oh, yeah. california those guys are cool as hell did an interview with them yeah, yeah. last year yeah they yeah, definitely those guys, did those them. Guys are, uh, good friends of ours as well yeah we've known them for for because they've been around for longer than us you know they were around since the when the thrash thing was coming back and then they kind of like, uh, you know, broke up or took a hiatus or whatever. And then they came back. So, uh, yeah, we're good friends with them. I've known them for, I know Luke, I've known Luke for a very long time. So, um, that's cool. We just played them early in December, I think. Um, yeah. when we, oh, yeah. we were up in San Francisco, we did a show with them, but yeah, those guys are awesome. Another one. I um, love schizo from up there in San Francisco, uh, doing the thrash, uh, thrash thing, okay, schizo. So the dude that fucking pukes on stage, fucking spews it out with like a a leaf blower. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he drinks like these colored shakes before they go on, and then he throws up, and he does it into like a it's like a leaf blower, and it blows it out like into the crowd. It's fucking disgusting, but. It just That's cracks gross. me up, but as a, as musically though they're cool. I mean, it's just he does that, and he was actually on Judge Judy because some chick sued him for puking all over her dress, and she had to go get it cleaned or some bullshit. But it was just hilarious because he's talking about it like all serious on Judge Judy, oh, you know. And it, it was pretty good. It's a, you can YouTube that shit. It's pretty funny. All right, I I've got. Never heard of them. I'll, I'll check them out. Yeah, schizo. All right, I got a good yeah. one. I always ask bands this question: um, <clears throat> If you had to pick one person to die getting uh, getting caught up in a mosh pit at one of your shows, would it be A. Justin Bieber, B. <laughs> Kim Kardashian, or C. Any member of Nickelback? What do you think, Mike? <laughs> That's well, these are a little weird. But, um. Hey, I like I like to do it. I like to do interview questions a little different because I used to be interviewed when I played, and I hated the cookie cutter questions. So I like to ask some good ones. Probably, I would say probably the Nickelback guys. Did any of the? All right, you can pick all of them if you want to. <laughs> Just put them all out of their misery. Oh. Chris, all of the above. Chris, all of the above. Yeah, when I interviewed yeah, yeah. Uh, Schizophrenia, those guys are killer from Belgium. Uh, the, oh, that's, that's another band that was, that I was going to mention. Oh, those, those, those guys, guys are amazing. Yeah, I interviewed them right when that album came out last year. It's freaking unbelievable. But yeah, the, the singer, Ricky, he said, do I have to pick just one? Can it be all of them? So it was, it was funny. So I, I always ask yeah. that one. It's just a lot of fun. 
All right. Um, anything to add, guys? Anything? I know we talked about the Morbid Angel Tour, working on new stuff. Uh, definitely like to push to everybody, buy the merch, help these guys out. I did. I'm going to buy another shirt here coming up. I uh, like to do that when I can. I'll link to it in the episode description so you guys can get a hold of these guys. But anything you guys wanted to add? Um, no, no, I think that I mean, pretty much covered and everything we have going on at the moment. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Come out to the shows, hang out, you know, party with us. Um, and yeah, thanks for, thanks for supporting. Thanks for having us. Um, I do want to mention some bands so that, that we'll go back to that question we were talking about. Yeah, please do. Uh, there was a, I mean, yeah, there's a few bands. So there's a band from Canada. Deathurus that are really cool. Love those guys. Um, yeah, Mulder from Chicago. Those, those yep. fucking guys are fucking awesome. And then uh, what else? Out, uh, Outer Tomb from Canada as well. Those guys are fucking sick. Okay, I don't um, think I've heard them before. I'll check that yeah, out. Yeah, check them out. Um, and then uh, obviously Schizophrenia, that was another one I was going to mention. Those guys are fucking sick as well. Hell yeah, Corrosive's a good Canada, a Canadian thrash band over by Tor- in Toronto. But they're on that CDN Records too. I think uh, there's a bunch of the Canadian bands are on CDN. But uh, I don't think Deathurus is. But I've got that new album. Yeah, it's ripping. And uh, yeah, yeah sick, so right? many good bands out there, man. It's just amazing, and love love yeah. finding new ones and like turning people like you know metalheads always do. We share you know good bands with each other. So very cool. I appreciate you guys taking the time out to do this. Um, I hope you guys have a great tour with Morbid Angel, and great you know luck moving fo- you know moving forward in anything you guys do. You're always welcome back here on Murder Metal Mayhem. And I'm going to close out this interview with one of my favorite tracks. This is from the Devouring Mortality album, and this is Ripperology. So our listeners that aren't familiar with you guys can get to hear the whole track. And so thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for having us. Thanks for taking the time. And yeah, cool chatting. We'll, We'll talk soon again. Hell yeah.